Welcome to this how-to guide for LiDAR LOMA processing. In this how-to guide, we will be demonstrating the GIS process that can be used to prepare the supporting data for a large-scale letter of map amendment, or LOMA, by using LiDAR. A written guide of this process can also be found in the Colorado Hazard Mapping website library. This LiDAR LOMA process is beneficial for communities that wish to evaluate several structures or areas of a community for a LOMA. This can be an area as small as a cul-de-sac affected by a portion of a stream or as big as an entire town affected by multiple streams. See the list below as well as the written guide to identify the data needed to perform this LiDAR LOMA analysis. Please keep in mind that the DEM resolution required to complete this process should be of QL2 or higher. You may also find the National Flood Hazard Database on FEMA's Map Service Center website. Further, a building footprint layer can be obtained for free from the Microsoft Building Footprints GitHub website. It is also recommended that you have a basic understanding of GIS before getting started. Before getting started, make sure you have a copy of ArcGIS software with the Spatial Analyst and 3D Analyst extensions enabled. For a LOMA in a flood zone AE, you will need the following data. Building footprints in a vector polygon format, terrain data that is newer than what was used for the latest flood study, and the following layers from the National Flood Hazard Layer Database. The flood hazard areas, base flood elevations, cross sections, and profile baseline layers. Alternatively, you can download the 1% water surface elevation grid if it is available. For Zone A streams where there are no cross sections or base flood elevation information published on the firm, you will need to research whether cross sections, water surface elevations, or water surface elevation grids are available before proceeding with this guide. Once you've collected the required data, we can begin the process. First, you're going to want to open a new ArcGIS document and add all your data, as you can see I've already done. Next, you're going to want to go to File, and go ahead and save your MXD to the folder of your choice, which will be the working folder for our analysis. To start the analysis, we are going to extract the special flood hazard areas from the effective flood hazard layer. To do this, right-click on your flood hazard area in the table of contents and go to Properties. Underneath the Definition Query tab, click Query Builder. And since my LOMA project area is completely within a zone AE, I'm going to enter the following expression of flood zone equals AE. And just a quick suggestion for querying, by clicking this Get Unique Values button, all attributes for your selected field in the list above will be listed out in this box. So from here, you can double click to complete the expression. Uh, this helps avoid any typos, especially late in later queries in this analysis, which may potentially cause an error in your selection. So we have our expression filled out, and now we'll click OK. Now we will export our queried results by right-clicking the flood hazard layer, going down to Data, and Export Data. And we are going to export all features using the same coordinate system as this layer's data source, and we're going to export it to our working folder. And go ahead and call this LOMA Special Flood Hazard Area, and save. When it asks you if you want to add the exported data, go ahead and click Yes. Now that we have exported out our special flood hazard areas into a new layer, we are going to clip it to the project area. So to do this, start an edit session by right-clicking the layer, going to Edit Features, and Start Editing. Next, use your cursor to select the flood areas in the project area. Now use the Cut Polygon tool from the Editor toolbar to cut the flood polygons around the project area. Select all polygons outside of the project area and delete them. To clarify what I am doing here is selecting all records from the shape file and then using the select tool to highlight our area of interest, which will unselect it. 
so that we can delete the areas outside. There are other ways to do this, but in the end, we want to make sure that only the records in the area of interest remain. Save your edits and stop your edit session. Next, we will extract cross sections from the cross section layer. Before doing this, make sure you know the name of the source of the flooding. To do this, select the information tool and then click on the profile baseline for your project area to identify the stream name. So my stream name here is Beaver Creek. Now to extract the cross sections, go to the selection tab at the top of your map document and click select by attributes. Select the cross section layer as your layer and keep the method as create new selection. In the query box, enter the statement water name equals and then the name of your stream. And click OK. Now we will export the selection by right clicking the cross section layer, going to data and export data. And we are going to export our selected features using the same coordinate system as this layer source data. And we are going to export it to our working folder, just as before. And we are going to name this layer Loma cross section. Save and OK. Now we are going to do the same thing except with our base flood elevation layer. So using the select tool, select by location this time. So we are going to select features from our base flood elevation layer, select ones that intersect the Loma project area. So for that, we can use this Loma special flood hazard area layer. We're going to select the base flood elevations that intersect our source layer feature. So click apply, okay. And now navigate to the BFE layer in your table of contents Right click, data, export data, and we are going to name this layer Loma BFE and save. To clear your selections, come up to this icon and clear your selected features. The next step in the process is to select the buildings within the special flood hazard area and then set up attributes. So once again, go to the selection tab, select by location, check the building footprint and use the Loma special flood hazard area as your source layer and intersect the source layer feature as your spatial selection method and click OK. Now we're going to export out these buildings by right clicking, data, export data. And we're going to call this layer Loma struct and save. Go ahead and clear your selection and then start an edit session in Loma structure. What we're going to do is delete any buildings that intersect our floodway. So I will select these two buildings in my area and delete them, then save and stop my edit session. If your project area has several buildings in the floodway and it isn't feasible to select them manually, go ahead and come into your Loma special flood hazard area in the table of contents, right click, open the attribute table, Find the record that has the floodway, which will be labeled in the zone subtype field. Now go to the select tab at the top, go to select by location, and select the features from the Loma structure layer that intersect the Loma special flood hazard layer. Make sure that this use selected features box is checked and click OK. Now you have selected all of the buildings that intersect that floodway. So go ahead and in your attribute table, clear the selection for the special flood hazard area. Now come into this space, right click and delete these buildings. 
Now we're going to add some new attribute fields to our Loma structure layer. So right click on the Loma structure layer and open attribute table. Now click the table options button and go to add field. The first field we are going to add is going to be our ID field, and this will be the unique ID field for all of our structures. Our type will be a short integer, and click OK. The next field we are going to add will be our lowest adjacent grade, so LAG, and this will be a double type, and click OK. The next field will be our new lowest adjacent grade, which will subtract one or two feet from the lowest adjacent grade based on the terrain data. This will also be a double, and you click OK. And our next field will be the water surface elevation. And this will also be double, click OK. Our next field will be basement, which will be a true or false field that will identify whether the structure has a basement or not. And this field will be a text. And click OK. Our next field will be fill. And this will also be a true false logic statement to record whether the structure was elevated on fill or not. So this will also be a text. OK. Add field. Our next field will be diff. And this field will hold the calculated difference between the water surface elevation and our new lowest adjacent grade. This type will also be a double. OK. Now our next field will be the term. And this text field will hold the determination on whether the new lowest adjacent grade is above or below the water surface elevation. And this will be a text. And click OK. And now we have all of our fields. To start filling these attributes out, let's first populate unique IDs for our Loma structures. So right click on the ID field and go to field calculator and make the ID equal FID plus one and click OK. So let's go ahead and close out of our attribute table and move on to our next step, which will be to merge the features in our Loma special flood hazard area layer. So let's go ahead and start an edit session on our special flood hazard areas. Right click the layer in the table of contents, go to selection, select all, and then come to your editor toolbar click and then go to merge. Select the first feature and click OK. Now editor, save edits and stop your edit session. Now that we've finished setting up our analysis layers, our next step is to build a triangular irregular network or a TIN from the water surface elevations. And this TIN will be used to determine the flood elevations for structures in the Loma project area. If you have the 1% annual chance water surface elevation grid for your project area, just copy it over to your working folder and skip this section. However, to create the TIN, go ahead and navigate to your toolbox. Under the 3D Analyst tools, then Data Management, TIN, you will find the Create TIN tool and go ahead and open it up. For your output TIN, go ahead and navigate to your working folder and name your TIN Water Surface Elevation TIN and save. Set your coordinate system to State Plane and this specific area will be Colorado State Plane North. So I will select my coordinate system and click OK. Using the Input Feature Class dropdown, go ahead and first add your Loma BFE layer. 
and use the elevation field as your height and leave the rest as default. Again, come to the drop down and add your loma cross sections. Your height field will be your water surface elevation and your type will still be a hard line. Finally, add your Loma Special Flood Hazard Area layer. Your height field will be none, and the type will be a hard clip. Click OK to run the tool. And now we have our water surface elevation tin. Let me go ahead and turn some of these layers off so that we can see it. Perfect. So now the next step in our analysis is to extract the water surface elevation values for these structures using the tin that we just created or the 1% annual chance water surface elevation grid if you have it. So to do this, we want to navigate back to our toolbox and under 3D analyst tools and then functional surface, we will click on the add surface information tool. Our input feature class will be our Loma structure layer, and our input surface will be that tin we just created or the 1% annual chance grid. Under output property, check the Z max box and then run the tool. Okay, so now let's go ahead and open up our attribute table for our Loma structures. And we'll see that the surface information was added to Zmax at the end of the attribute table. What we're going to do is copy these values over to our water surface elevation field. So to do this, right click on the field, go to field calculator, and then make the water surface elevation equal to that Zmax field, and then click OK. So now that we've successfully copied over our values, go over to the Zmax field, right click, and delete field. Yes. Now in this next step, we're going to essentially repeat what we just did, except instead of extracting water surface elevations, we will be extracting elevations from our terrain data. So navigate back to your add surface information tool and your input feature class will again be our structures and the input surface will be the terrain data, and check Z min under output property, and click OK. Now if we go back to our attribute table, we can see that this Z min value, which will be our lowest adjacent grade, has been added to the end of the attribute table. We're going to do the same thing and just copy those values over to our lowest adjacent grade. So we'll go to our field calculator and our lowest adjacent grade will now equal our Z min. Click OK. Now that our values are successfully copied over, let's go over and delete our Z min field. And we can move on to our next step, which will be to calculate the new lowest adjacent grade. So right click on the new lowest adjacent grade and open up your field calculator and make this new lowest adjacent grade equal to our lowest adjacent grade minus two and click OK. The next field we want to calculate is going to be our difference. So we will right click and go to field calculator and this difference field is going to be equal to the new lowest adjacent grade minus the water surface elevation and click OK. So values here that are greater than zero are above the 1% annual chance flood elevation. Uh, values equal to or below zero are below that elevation. So what we will need to do is select the values that are greater than zero, which we have two, and then we are going to perform a field calculation on the determination field, and label it above 
water surface elevation and click OK. And now we're going to select all of our values that are less than zero, which is just one. And we are going to make this equal below water surface elevation and OK. Now for our next field, we are going to determine if our structures have a basement present. And there are two options for this. Option one is to use attributes from your building footprint layer to determine if any basement information is available. But if no information is readily available, manual review will be required using online resources such as Google Street View or Zillow. It is recommended to work with a community representative when evaluating your structures for basements manually. But since I have created these structures for demonstration purposes and only structures without basements should be included in the LOMA application, I am just going to assume that my structures do not have basements and fill out my basement field as false. So I will come in here, calculate my basements as false. Now to fill out our final field, which is fill. Again, it's recommended to work with a community representative to review building permit records in order to determine if any of your structures have been elevated on fill. If there are no permitting records available, you can review the terrain data for obvious signs of fill placement, such as closed contours around each structure. Again, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to assume that my structures are not elevated on fill and go ahead and calculate my field to be false. Keep in mind that you only need to fill in these fields for structures above the water surface elevation. Once all of your structures have been evaluated, select the ones that are going to be submitted for a LOMA and create a new shapefile. To do this, we want to do a definition query. So open up your properties for your structure layer And under the definition query tab, open up your query builder and select structures where the determination is equal to above water surface elevation and basement equals false. And finally, fill equals false and click OK. Now we'll go export out this layer. And we will call it Loma Struct Final and save. This final shapefile and its attributes help to quickly assess and remove multiple properties and structures from the special flood hazard areas. As a quick recap, in order to be eligible for a LOMA, structures must ultimately be determined to be above the water surface elevation. In addition, only structures without a basement that are determined to be above the lowest adjacent grade should be included in the LOMA application. And only structures that were not elevated on fill can be included in a LIDAR LOMA. For alternative methods and additional information, please refer to the written LIDAR LOMA processing how-to guide and the LIDAR LOMA submittal how-to guide both available on coloradohazardmapping.com.